Conditional statements. What are they? What is it? Conditional statement is a logical statement that has two parts, a hypothesis and a conclusion. Why? Helps us to express what might happen in the present and future. Interesting fact. The bat is the only flying mammal and reaches over 160 kilometers per hour or 100 miles per hour. However, it cannot walk. Now, let's add to the definition of a conditional statement. It can be written in two different ways. Let's take a look at this example. All dogs have four legs. This is one way to write a conditional statement. The other way is to write the statement in if-then form. To write it in if-then form, we take the subject, all dogs, and rewrite it as, an animal is a dog, or something similar, and put it after the word if. An animal is a dog is our hypothesis. What do we think is our conclusion? Let's find out. Now, let's rewrite the object four legs as, it has four legs, and put it after the word then. It has four legs is our conclusion. Now that we have our hypothesis and conclusion, let's make a table so we can see what is happening a little easier. Once again, our conditional statement is, if an animal is a dog, then it has four legs. The next statement we're going to introduce is converse. With converse, we switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. What do we think is a converse statement? That's right. If an animal has four legs, then it is a dog. Do we think this is always true? No. For instance, a cat is a counterexample for this converse statement. The next statement we're going to introduce is inverse. With inverse, the hypothesis and the conclusion remain, but we negate them. What do we think is the inverse statement? That's right. If an animal is not a dog, then it does not have four legs. Do we think this is always true? No. For instance, an elephant is a counterexample for this inverse statement. The next statement we're going to introduce is contrapositive. With contrapositive, the hypothesis and the conclusion switch, and we negate them. What do we think is a contrapositive statement? That's right. If an animal does not have four legs, then it is not a dog. Do we think this is always true? Yes. For instance, a whale is a perfect example for this contrapositive statement. These statements follow a pattern, where the conditional statement and the contrapositive are true, and the converse and inverse are false. Now, let's take a look at some math examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Let's take a closer look at example 1. Let's read the steps. Step 1, write down the if-then. Step 2, write down the converse. Step 3, write down the inverse. Step 4, write down the contrapositive. Now, let's read the question. Write the statement in if-then form, converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Where the statement is, 41 degrees is acute. Let's begin our table with the conditional statement in if-then form. What do we think is the if-then form? That's right. If the measure of angle A is 41 degrees, then angle A is acute. Next, let's find the converse. Remember, the hypothesis and conclusion switch. What do we think is the converse statement? That's right. If angle A is acute, then the measure of angle A is 41 degrees. Next, let's find the inverse. Remember, the hypothesis and the conclusion remain, but we negate them. What do we think is the inverse statement? That's right. If the measure of angle A does not equal 41 degrees, then angle A is not acute. Next, let's find the contrapositive. Remember, the hypothesis and the conclusion switch, and we negate them. What do we think is the contrapositive statement? That's right. If angle A is not acute, then the measure of angle A does not equal 41 degrees. 
Now that we've filled out our table, which statements do we think are true? Which statements do we think are false? That's right, it follows a pattern. So the conditional statement and the contrapositive are true, and the converse and inverse are false. That is example one. Let's move on to example two. Now, let's read the question. Write the statement in if-then form, converse, inverse, and contrapositive, where the statement is 90 degrees is a right angle. Let's begin our table with the conditional statement in if-then form. What do we think is the if-then form? That's right. If the measure of angle A is 90 degrees, then angle A is a right angle. Next, let's find the converse. Remember, the hypothesis and the conclusion switch. What do we think is a converse statement? That's right. If angle A is a right angle, then the measure of angle A is 90 degrees. Next, let's find the inverse. Remember, the hypothesis and conclusion remain, but we negate them. What do we think is the inverse statement? That's right. If the measure of angle A does not equal 90 degrees, then angle A is not a right angle. Next, let's find the contrapositive. Remember, the hypothesis and the conclusion switch, and we negate them. What do we think is the contrapositive statement? That's right. If angle A is not a right angle, then the measure of angle A does not equal 90 degrees. Now that we filled out our table, which statements do we think are true? Which statements do we think are false? That's right. The conditional statement and the contrapositive are true. But this time, the converse and inverse are also true. Because we use a definition to write our original statement in if-then form. And that is example 2. This type of example, where all the statements are true, is called a biconditional statement because the conditional statement and its converse are both true. And a biconditional statement is a logical statement that contains the phrase if and only if. And let's bring back our definition. 90 degrees is a right angle. Using if and only if, we can write 90 degrees as a right angle as an angle has a measure of 90 degrees if and only if an angle is a right angle. Now, it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer this question and I'll show you the results in 3, 2, and 1. Did you get them correct? Superb. If not, there's always tomorrow.